All right, so welcome everybody. So today I want to make sure I started recording. I had actually filmed half a video and it didn't record, so uh, to technology. But it's great at times as well. So today we're doing elimination using multiplication. Okay. So what we're going to do is we yesterday we had done elimination by adding and subtracting. But now we actually have to change some of the equation variables so that way we can um, actually accomplish our main goal of what we want to do. Okay, and, and what I mean by that is, is by solving equations by adding them together using elimination. So what we do first though is the bell work is always within my class. Please pause the video and do the bell work. All right, so hopefully you guys did the work on your own. Please do this. It helps you to check for understanding to make sure you know what you're doing, okay? So up here, ladies and gentlemen, you would add these two together, okay? So when you add them together, you'd end up with, um, let me get a good color here. You'd end up with 5 plus 3 is 8, plus, uh, y minus y is 0. Add those together at 16. Divide, you get 2, okay? Um, this one here, then you plug 2 into the original equation, all right, so go that way with it, and then it'll be 5 times 2 is 10. Subtract it from both sides, you get negative 1. I talked about my class, how going forward I'm going to stop doing some of the simple uh, division and addition and multiplication because you guys need to be able to do that at this point. Okay, Find two numbers that have a sum of 151 and a difference of 7. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is kind of what we're going to be doing in class on the Friday uh, on the February or not February November 9th okay just so that we can get used to these word problems so find two word problems it's x plus y equals 151 and x minus y equals 7 all right and then solve the system of equations below so I start here on this side add them together 1 plus 5 1 plus 4 is 5 add these together at 0 30 divide by 5 you get 6 same thing here then you take the 6, plug it in. I'd use the top equation again just because I think it's easier for me, especially when there's no division. It's just a single number. 6 minus 3y, subtract 6. You get 9. Divide by negative 3. You get negative 3. All right. So what we're doing now is we're going to be making sense of problems, and we're going to be changing um, some things using uh, elimination. But we got to use multiplication. So when you guys were growing up in elementary school, you started solving equations just like this, okay? And you basically would come across and you'd say, all right, you need to add these two together. Well, the problem is, is can you add them together? No, you had to find the common denominator. Okay, so when you found the common denominator, so for example, on this one, it's 10. All right, this would be 10 over, and then you, because you're subtract, you would multiply this equation by the number 5, right? So you multiply by 5, and you get 5 over 10. And then in order to get this to 10, you'd have to multiply it by what? by 2. So this top becomes 4. Then you could add it together to get 9 over 10. We're going to be going along the same lines here where we want to find a common, not denominator, but common variable. Okay. And so what you have here is you have a 2 times a 3. So a common variable here would be 6. That's great, but you have to multiply both this and this by a number. I don't want to do that yet. You can do it, but not yet. So what's the common variable between 2 and 1? Well, it would be 2. So let's concentrate on just multiplying this by 2. But then the problem arises is that if I just multiply it by 2, I'll get 2 plus 2. Does that eliminate the y? No, it does not. So you need to do what? Multiply it by a negative 2. So now we need to do distribution. Okay. A big key forward, one of the huge things that I want to make sure you guys got from this lesson is the distribution of this negative 2. Okay, when you distribute it in, it'd get negative 4x minus 2y because it's negative 2 times y. And then the negative 2 times 23 is negative 46. Okay, and then this one here you just drag straight over. So it's 3x plus 2y equals 37. Now you do your math. This is negative x equals negative 9. Okay, good. We're at a point now where we can look and see are we close to a variable? Well, we are. But can you leave a variable negative? Remember, you can never leave it a negative. So technically what you're supposed to do from a math standpoint is multiply both sides by negative 1. When you multiply by negative 1, negative and negative is what? Positive. Negative and negative is also a positive. Now, for some of you as discussed in my class today, do you have to multiply it by negative 1? How about you just switch the signs? Yeah, you can do that. 
But I want to make sure you understand why you switch the signs and how. It's by multiplying by a negative 1. Okay. So once you know that, that's good to go for me. Then I'll plug the x value in up here. So 2 times 9 is 18 plus y equals 23. Subtract 18 from both sides. And your y value is going to be 5. So there's our point. If we were to graph this on Desmos, this is what I want you to get. Hopefully it intersects at 9 over 5 up. Okay, now it's your turn, ladies and gentlemen. Do this guided practice. Remember, figure out what the common denominator would be or common variable would be. Multiply one of these equations by that variable, and you move on from there. All right, so I already worked it out for you guys. And so what I want to make sure is that let's talk. This first equation here, the simplest way to solve this would be by using negative 2. Okay, It's not that hard because then it would be 6 times. Uh, if you would have to multiply this because that's 14 is a common variable. This one's only uh, 6, so you can multiply just the bottom equation by negative 2. Do the distribution. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative and a negative is positive 14. Negative and a negative is positive 38. Do your math. Divide by 4, or divide by 12, you get 4. Then you plug the 4 in, okay? 2 times 4 is 8, okay? So I used this one here, and I brought it down into there. 6x minus 8, add 8, 6, 8. You guys get it, okay? Divide from there. This one here, hopefully you guys did it. I start with the purple. Um, there's actually two different ways you can do this one, okay? You could multiply the top equation also by a negative 2. So if you did it that way, great. Remember... It's not, there are multiple ways of doing these eliminations. You pick what you're comfortable with. That's what I want to make sure you guys understand, okay? So if you multiply the top by negative 2, then you would get your equation. But I did negative 3, so here's my startup. Drag it down, negative 3, negative and negative, or negative and a positive is negative. Same, negative and negative is a positive. Do your math, negative 5q over 20 equals 25, divide by negative 5, you'd get this. Plug it back into the original equation. So I use the top equation again for over here. Okay, and so it'd be 9r minus 5, add 5, divide by 9, r equals 2. Simple, right? It's just a point of want the start is kind of a struggle. It might be a struggle for you guys. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be we 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 have to do more than one variable. Now on this instance here, um, you have multiple ways of doing it. So Common denominator, common variable between 4 and 3 is what? It's 12. So I could multiply the top by 3 and the bottom by negative 4. Or I could multiply the top by negative 3 and the bottom by 4, right? And then that would give me the 12x to eliminate the 12s. But I don't want to multiply by a negative if I don't have to. So I already have a negative here. So I'm just going to take and multiply this top equation by 5. And then I'm going to multiply this bottom equation by 3. Okay, that way it's going to be 15y and a negative 15y. Let me look and see if I did. I solved it out already. Okay, so what you do is you do the, you solve it out. You do your variable. The solving is over here on the green on the left. So um, this is the first step. 5 times 4, 20, 15, and 40. You guys should be able to follow the math along with that. 9, 15, and negative 69. Follow the math along with that. Do your math x equals negative 1, then you plug it back into the top equation, so it's going down to there, negative 4, 3, add, there you go, simple math, right, you guys should be able to put the pieces together, if not, let me know, all right, your turn, ladies and gentlemen, you try it, all right, hopefully you paused the video, and that you did it, so that'd be great, so once you do it, there are multiple ways of doing this one, okay, here's, let's start with 2a, Multiply by 5. So the reason I chose that is because this negative positive variable relationship right here. Okay, So I chose to do that so I don't have to multiply by negative. So it's 5 and 3. Here's your math across the board. And then I get 31 plus 0 equals 0. So if I were to divide by 31, as long as the 0 is not in the denominator, you can divide, but your x is still going to be what? 0. If my x... my 0 was in the denominator. Remember, that's when it's undefined, but not in this case, okay? Plug in 0 back into the top equation. Simple setup, okay? The second one. Now, the second one, as I talked in class, is 
technically speaking, there were four different ways you could do this. Now, I chose to do 3, negative 2, but you technically could have done negative 3, 2, or you could have chose to cancel out to 24, and so you would have been 4, negative 6, or negative 4, 6. Those are the three different options you had, okay? I chose this uh, neg 3, negative 2 just because I did. You could have solved it a different way, and if you did, congratulations to you. Hopefully, you got the same answer, and if you did, then that means you did your math correct. So what you want to do is distribute it out. 6 times 3, 18, 6B, and 6. That would be negative 8, negative 6, and negative 16. There's the answer. Multiply them together. Then, or Sorry, subtract them together, then divide. You get x is, actually, this is a negative 1. Okay? So let me verify. I did my math right. I did in this practice setup, negative 10. Uh-huh. 10A. Ooh, I did it wrong. So it's A is negative 1. Hopefully my face, let me move it up because my face might be blocking this. If it is, I'm going to get angry. So uh, A is negative 1. And then I, let me plug a negative 1 up here. So it would be 6. So that means this is negative, which means what? That this, oh, I, of course you get the big eraser, Jason. This is positive. Eat. If I make that positive, that means this changes to 6 plus 2 is 8. If I change that to an 8, then, ladies and gentlemen, 2B divided by 8 is B equals 4. Ooh, how about that when you go back through and you see your mistakes? Hey, at least I saw it. So make sure you guys do the same thing, okay? If you see a mistake, make sure you correct it, and then you go from there. All right, sweet. So now it's, we're going to talk about a system of equations. Using vocabulary and definitions. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is the main thing for you guys today in this lesson is that you can set up equations. Field gold, I'm going to make that X. Extra point, I'm going to make that Y. Field gold is worth three points. And then an extra point is worth one point, so that's just Y. And if it's points related, how many points were scored in the season? 125. Okay, now let's switch gears to the other half. Okay, now we're talking about field gold and extra points. And he kicked a total of how many? 71. Now, it says 71 field goals, and the first time I read this, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense because a field goal and an extra point are this different. So this is actually written a little wrong. Colt made 71 field goals and extra points for 175. Well, Mr. Vinatieri, hopefully you guys understand that, that the answer to this would be x plus y equals 71. Graph it, ladies and gentlemen. Get your answer. I'm not going to provide it for you. All right, then last but certainly not least, the distance formula. Oh, boy. Distance equals rate times time. Please remember this. This I, I dislike these questions very, very a lot, very much, okay, because you guys will get these, and it will confuse everybody. But let's talk. So we're going to write two equations, right? So what is our distance? Well, our distance here was actually four miles, okay? So we went four miles on both of these. And then what is our rate, okay? Our rate is I'm going to make B equals uh, a rate of the canoe in uh, still water, okay? So that's going to be my B. My letter C, which I'm going to create, is rate of the current, okay, in the water. And hopefully you guys know what current is by now in a river. So it sweeps you away. So what this first equation is would be 4 equals B plus C. And then the other equation, ladies and gentlemen, talks about the return trip. So it would be 1.5 B minus 1.5 C. Now, ladies and gentlemen, can you graph this to solve it? Yes. Just make sure when you do, if you say B and C, that you would label it B equals X, Y equals C. So that's it for this lesson. This will be the last kind of big demonstration about the different steps of how to solving an equation. Remember, my goal for you guys is to push forward with Desmos and to answer these. But if there's ever a chance that you couldn't do it, I want you to be able to do it via math. If you have any questions, please come see me. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, it's been my pleasure as always. And you guys have a great day.